people get raped because there's a rapist, is what I usually say. For people to assume that kind of thing, really hard to deal with. Instead of, did she say no, did you ask? We're in the midst of this perfect storm. The stakes are very high. Drinking, risk-taking, and being away from home for the first time. A typical student experience. But it's also why these young people are especially vulnerable to sexual assault and why consent is not as straightforward as it should be. I think the biggest problem we have on campus is like drinking too much and like having sex. And then like, you're like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Do you consent like when like you're drunk? Like, is that consent? It happens, I feel like. And then the next day you're like, well, wait, did I say yes? We're in Ohio, home to a large student population. To find out more about what some researchers have described as an epidemic of sexual violence on America's campuses. The people we speak to tell us the Me Too movement hasn't had enough impact on attitudes and behavior. When I go out, men are touching your ass, they're, they're trying to grab you, they're trying to take you home. I've had friends that wake up the next morning and like they remember saying that they didn't want to like have sex with someone and they woke up with like no clothes on. Everyone seems to know the ground rules of sexual contact are changing and a few young men admit they feel worried about getting it wrong. What if the next morning after I meet a girl she regrets it and then I become one of those people that's locked up for something that I thought was okay when it really wasn't. Luckily, I was with a really good group of friends that took me home Shift. immediately. And, Amid you know, the shifting landscape, these students highlight how much work is still to be done. Just like off the top of my head, I can think of like 10 different women who I know, like within my friend group, who have experienced some form of sexual assault. It's hard to measure, but one estimate suggests that as many as one in four will be subjected to a serious sexual assault before they graduate. Brianna Cotton is one of them. I personally like have been affected and didn't report, so like I'm sure that there are plenty of other women who haven't, so that statistic might even be generous. Can I ask you why you didn't report? Um just like the stigma, though what were you wearing and like that particular night I was wearing like a lower cut shirt. Um, I, I had been drinking like not an excessive amount, but I had I was for sure drunk like on the night that it happened I only remember like bits and pieces so it's also then you start to question like maybe I did consent initially and then like there was like loss in translation or you know it's their word versus yours at that point so people get raped because there's a rapist is what I usually say Tara Purdy works at the sexual violence crisis clinic that covers several of the big universities in Ohio she says that campus culture can reinforce the damaging idea that young women are somehow to blame for being vulnerable. We don't ask people who have been mugged, why were you at the ATM? You got out money, so you must have been asking for it. But we do say to victims of sexual assault, well, why was your skirt so short? You know, why were you out at night walking alone? Just down the road at Antioch College, they've long taken a radical approach to preventing sexual offenses. Here, any touch requires clear, enthusiastic verbal permission. It's called affirmative consent. At every step of physical or sexual contact, you ask for consent. So let's say I'm with somebody and we're hanging out and let's say I have a crush and I want to kiss them. I'll say, can I kiss you? Or can I touch you here? Can I hold your hand? Can I like touch your thigh? Can I, is this okay? Do you feel okay with this? Um, I and you actually do that? Most of the time. And people do it to you? <laughs> yes, yes. It makes me feel like respected more. At least my personal space is being respected. Like when I'm outside of Antioch and somebody just comes up and pats my shoulder, or like I didn't ask for that. Like I really appreciate when people, you know, they, they don't just assume that they can come into your space. What do you say to people mm -hmm. who say this is all a bit over the top? Mm -hmm. You're legislating intimacy and it's just not practical. Mm -hmm. I would say you've probably never tried this before because it does take practice. The first time um, I really tried to 
ask people about what they like, um, it was a little awkward. You know, you're not used to asking if you can kiss someone or asking if you can touch someone. And I think the main reason is that, especially in the United States, um, you're taught that sex isn't something you should be talking about. Or even, especially as a woman, I feel like you're not supposed to talk about sex, you're not supposed to want sex. And I think this policy really breaks that down. I want to know that someone's into what I'm doing before I do anything, because that's not sexy. Because if the other person's not into it, I'm not into it either. So I think it's, e it's even more erotic when you know that your partner is engaging and you know that they're into what's happening. It's been this way here since the early 90s, when a group of female students wrote a manifesto on consent in response to a rape on campus. In the university archive, they've kept a record of how the Antioch rules, as they were called, were mocked all over the world. We were just on a mission to change a policy. It was an ideological fight. It was a fight about ideas. Bethany Saltman was one of the original authors. To me, it's so obvious. It's so not a big deal. It's like, instead of, did she say no, did you ask? It's just, you know, it's just a flip of the switch, which so many great ideas are. Nearly three decades later, all visitors to Antioch even the Sky News crew still have to sign a form saying they'll comply with the policies. Versions of these rules have now become commonplace on campuses across the country, sparking fierce debate about whether universities are going too far in their scramble to solve the problem. Even here, they seem uncertain. In this document, you say, if anyone's consumed any alcohol, consent cannot be given. That's correct. So technically, Two students who have a beer and then have sex are assaulting one another? If somebody files a complaint, there's an assault. There, there, really? is, there is room for an assault there, yes. Should those determinations be being made that have those lifelong effects on people by universities? The way the current law is written, yes. Is it right, though? I don't know. I really don't. Andrew Miltonberg has defended hundreds of accused young men who find themselves investigated by colleges whether or not the police are involved. I think it's a very dangerous time to be a young man on campus. We're in the midst of this perfect storm where to be accused of some sort of sexual misconduct virtually assures that you will be found responsible. It is absolutely, positively ruining people's lives beyond repair. He says his clients are trapped in a highly politicized sham justice system with no consistency at all between schools and low standards of evidence often required to make decisions. If you're found responsible, whether or not you're suspended or expelled, there will be uh, a permanent record of disciplinary and in many cases sexual misconduct on your transcript and that transcript is a prerequisite to any type of graduate school and it's also a prerequisite for most uh, professional type jobs. So the stakes are very high. This young man and his mother, who don't want to be identified, say the current climate on campus means even an accusation is enough to change everything. The way that the school has done this has literally destroyed my life. After a student accused him of rape, he was investigated and cleared three times, once by the police and twice by the university. He says the college assumed he was guilty and the process violated his civil rights. Every time you walk down the hall, it's like, oh, like that's yeah, me, my name. And then, yeah, he's a rapist, like, looking, like pointing and everything. For people to assume that kind of thing about me is really... <laughs> It's just really hard to deal with. For people to label me something like that, uh, when it's completely against who I am, it's just really hard to like, go on like that. But for others, the system is failing because it's not robust enough. Emma Salkowitz accused a man of rape and then carried a mattress around campus in protest at the subsequent complicated, drawn-out investigation. The art student became the face of the campus survivors' movement and insists that for everyone's sake, the police shouldn't be the only option. 
survivors who were assaulted in university, part of why they would rather their university handle it than the police department is that often they feel like the crime was committed because the, their attacker wasn't educated on consent. They're young, right? Like we're, back in university, we were all young. We recognize that we do stupid things. So many survivors are like, I really just wish he would like go through an educational program and maybe get suspended for a month and then like learn. There are around 20 million students at colleges across America. And in a few weeks time, they'll all return to class. Around them swirls a heated legal and political battle about the limits and responsibilities of the schools they attend. For now, colleges await new permanent guidelines from the government, leaving an imperfect system to deal with the crisis. Hannah Thomas-Peter, Sky News.